Hello Multiverse, welcome to Omniverse Gamers. My name is Damian Bazayo. This video is going to dissect another dynamic encounter. We're going to call this one uh, Croc and Giant. So this encounter is from Pirates of the Ashen Sea, a sort of West Marsh at Sea that I designed for uh, the, the Roll20 recently because of, you know, we're all playing over Roll20 right now. And uh, so I just kind of developed a, it's basically a West Marsh style, but it's at sea. So instead of going out from the center of these islands and each island has its own set of challenges and whatnot. So this party, this is maybe their third time together i think they're going to explore giant island there are so their so their main goal in this game is to find these little geometric shapes and of these like these plates with geometric shapes in them and there's holes in them and they don't know what they do i don't want to uh, disclose that right now because it's still a mystery to them um but anyway they're trying to they're, trying, they're exploring giant island for clues they're a pretty they're a strong group so the captain's like well you guys survived that egg octopus you guys might be able to go to giant island and have some more success we know the giants sleep by night so it's up to you if you guys want to go at night when they're sleeping, if you want to go into the day, they made the choice. They wanted to go pretty late in the day and kind of scout and not, you know, if they see anything, they're going to run, basically. So they went. So they go to Giant Island. They, they dock. They go up. I lead them through a couple maps. They get to this one map where they find this massive foot. Let me show you this map here. So this massive foot map. This map was drawn by Chepeku. Um, I'll send you a link to their Patreon. I'm going to use a lot of their maps recently, soon. So, this, so they find this big old footprint. This footprint's maybe 400 years old, but it's massive. It sinks down in. At first, I don't tell them that. They, they find this footprint. They're like, whoa, oh my God. Because they know they're coming to the island of the giants. And they're in their mind, they're picturing, you know, giants that are, you know, in their 10, 20 feet, you know, tops, you know, you know, moderate giants, you know, because they're, they're a double party, but four of them, they're not, they're not expecting, you know, they're not expecting this footprint. They see this, but they're just like, oh my God, this is, this is giant island when you say giant. So just like, they're already like alert and they're, you know, so we just kind of explored, we got a little exposition in this, in this, uh, they got, they found some old stuff and they, some clues to what, you know, had happened and not a lot, just, just a little bit of foreshadowing. And then like, you know, they just discovered that this foot was maybe been here for four or five hundred years has been here so they eventually move on and then they get to this next map this map was made by go adventure map so thanks to them too uh, there's a link in the down below to go to their patreon so they, as they get onto this map they see this massive sword now the goal of this sword um the goal of this encounter this whole thing is because there's these gems on this sword i want to give them they're, they're going to give them magical powers these gems if they, if they pop these gems out of the sword when they touch them, they're cursed, but they're going to give them resistances to different elements and stuff, basically. Kind of like material. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII, so it's kind of like material, basically, in the game. Um, but they have to pop them out. And, and then, But they, when they do that, the first one they touch is going to be there. They don't know what they do. They're different colors. They don't know what they do. When they pop them out, they're going to they're, they're, they're going to grab them. So that was the whole point of this encounter was to get them to this sword, but also make it an encounter and make it, you know, make them their first salvo and giant giant island be you know exciting and fun and you know so they they come in they're kind of and there's they, they as they get closer they see this murky pool of water it's like it's like sludge and it's like it's like the i don't know if you ever seen farming sludge but it's just like the bilge and it's the nasty the, the nasty uh, slurry that comes out you know it's just it's just it's this old stagnant pool of something of, of, of really murky water it's, it's pretty big you know but it's it's, it's it's artificially created pond basically they don't they don't really it's it's, it's weird looking. you know they start exploring the barbarian determines that this thing it looks like a giant hammer actually hit this, like a, just a crater that like formed really sharply, like a big massive hammer maybe it hit this. Which with the massive swords around and that massive footprint, like they're they're picturing these massive battles of these Goliaths, you know, these colossal, you know, colossal monsters fighting with swords and stuff. And this sword is ancient. This sword is made of adamantium. They find out, and they're like really excited because it's really it's a really um you know it's a really valuable metal to make all kinds of stuff. I let them craft. But it's weighs like you know three thousand pounds. This thing's really heavy, so they they don't really have a way to carry it at the moment. But they know it's there foreshadowing they can come back for it anyway so they're tinkering around with it and then as they're tinkering around with it the, the water kind of rumbles a little bit and this what i've been waiting for this whole time i had this crocodile in there it's a giant crocodile and it uh i waited for my moment i waited for my moment and it attacked it, it came right out sneak attack at the goliath right here which, 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 you know how alligators can jump their length to attack to spring attack and that's what he was waiting to do and i jumped so i gave everyone a perception check they all got it except for the goliath the, the Goliath Barbarian, everybody else had made the perception check. Rather than just sneak attack, boom, I got you, haha, -ha, I wanted to make it more dramatic. So I, as the, I had the alligator spring his attack midair. These three saw it. They got to react to it. Whereas the Goliath, he missed his perception check. He did not get a reaction as this thing's coming at him. The three other three, bam, 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 in my mind. But what they did, so we have an artificer and a ranger. The artificer had built the ranger some uh they were arrows that could work like a bola so they shoot this arrow and the bola would wrap around something to trip them so he asked if he could do the same thing around the alligator's mouth because the whole you know how bolas work in my mind i'm like i don't see why not it's not you're not gonna be able to trip him but you can at least you know it's an alligator so you can wrap his mouth up so as the alligator sprung 
boom, he wrapped the thing up. I think the magic just shot a sacred flame or something at it. The other, the fighter had an arrow when he just, boom, boom. They all got one, they all got to do one action against this thing. I didn't let him move or anything. They have to do, they have to do one thing at it. As this thing jumps at the barbarian, the, the other two hit it with an arrow and, and, the, and a sacred flame. And then the, the thing wraps around. He made his check. I made an athletic check to try to stop it. And he, he succeeded. So he wrapped the, the, the alligator's face. So then on the alley, as the alligators continued through, instead of biting the Goliath, I just, he just kind of freaked out and he smashed into him. So I did fall damage. I did, two, I did 20 feet of fall damage. He was jumping 20 feet. So I did 2d6. The Goliath saved against it. So he took half and he was, he wasn't raging yet. So he took the damage. And then they just started fighting this, this, this lizard, this, this crocodile, which was a pretty crazy fight. The crocodile, I could have had the crocodile back up and get concealment again and come out. You know what I mean? If it was a really, if this, if this was my only combatant against them, this crocodile, I would have had the crocodile retreat, get concealment again, and then keep, just like keep spring attacking them. That would have been, if this was a single monster. But this, again, like all my encounters, this is the distraction. They're fighting this thing. And at a certain point, every time, anytime the monster attacks and it's my turn, I do a perception check. And anytime the, the, the players shout to each other, like to, for tactical things that they have to shout to each other, I roll a perception check. And what I'm doing, most of the giants are away, but there's one giant on guard duty around here, and she's she's not she's not paying attention. She's no one ever no one invades giant islands, or she's just kind of bored. She's the only one not at the giant party, which they'll find later. But uh, so because the giants are having a beach party, and she's the only one not there, so she's just like uh, kind of grumbling and on her off to her own. But I just keep rolling perception checks. They didn't players didn't know that. I keep rolling. I keep rolling. Eventually, I finally pass my perception check. She knows what's going on. Now, she's going to be like the two, one of the, the Goliath Barbarian actually speaks giant. So he's going to hear this massive voice just be like, no touching holy swords. And they're going to be like, we didn't touch it. We didn't touch it. And she's like, you did touch it. I saw you. And she just grabs a rock and flings it at them. A big, massive boulder. So the, the right after Goliath. And the Goliath's like, oh my God. So Goliath's like, I'm like, you can, you can take this. You can either make a deck save to get out of it. Or you can take a strength save to try to, you know, deflect it a little bit. He took the strength save, so he so he didn't he didn't wanted to take the strength save, so he took it, and that the rock didn't keep rolling into the fighter. He wanted to, so he's gonna take it. I'm gonna take it anyway. I'm gonna try to stop it with my body, physically stay in front of this rock instead of doing a deck save. So I let him. He made a save. He he saved for half. He took the damage. He actually caught the rock. He made he rolled an amazing athletic check. He he caught the rock. He couldn't like quite. It was heavy. It was a big rock. He caught it and kind of went down with it. He was just like Ugh! he was. He had it like he was pretty much stuck holding that rock now. But he took the damage, and then she's running along the edge, and like shouting at them, rah, rah, rah. And she's going, she's running over to get this tree, to rip this tree out and throw it at them. So the ranger, he has four of those bola arrows, so he shot one at the at the, at the uh, croc, and he's like, now can I, as she's running, it was his turn, I want to I wanna wait till she runs, I'm going to shoot her in the leg to trip her up as she's running. And I was like, well, you can try. I mean, she's strong, she's a giant, she's going to get advantage on her, you know, on the, on the, on the, the trip. It's basically a shove, it's like a trip attack, so he's going to get athletics. Or just start athletics. Well, actually, he gets an acrobatics because the way because the bowler, so he gets an acrobatics. They give it to him just to initiate this trip, and she's gonna get out, uh, athletics with advantage. She failed. He got her. I so I let him do it. He made his, he made his attack roll and he made the the trip attack. So when back, so she's running and wraps around her legs. I had her make a deck save to fall to to not fall off the cliff. She failed. So she goes tumbling down. Uh, she hits she hits right at the edge of the cliff. Starts falling. I have her make a strength save to try to grab the tree. So I had her grab the tree. And she made it. But I had the tree. She had already started ripping it. She just So she ripped the tree out of the ground and went falling, tumbling down to this next this next level right here with the tree. Which, you know, foreshadowing. Now she's got a, she's on the second level. They're a little bit closer to her in this combat. And she's got a big tree to wield. So it's just doing that. What he did was he changed the battlefield. I was able to alter my battlefield terrain. But... With when that player said, "Oh, can I trip her?" and I was like, "Yeah, if he trips her, she's gonna fall off the top of that cliff." Then I'll, that that's that's awesome. I used what he wanted to do to my advantage, even though it was it was to their advantage because he tripped her and she fell, and it was to the whole party's advantage. It was that idea was to the advantage of the encounter, and I just used it. So they, they their agency in this battle, they changed the battlefield. I didn't, but I also as a DM. I got to change that battlefield, and it was organic. It didn't even, it wasn't anything that was planned. It was just something that happened. So I was like, sure, that's going to be great. Go for it. You know, it was, it was a great, great dramatic thing as he knocked her off the cliff. She took some damage, fall damage, which was minor for a giant, but it was just very dramatic and very cool. And she, she's now on the second level, that much closer to them. So our barbarian has that has a javelin of teleporting, which you may have seen in my other videos. He's going to use that, stab her with it. He's going to teleport himself right up there. He's right up there with her. Everybody else gets their range attack. You know, the fighter moves in. She's a, she can't quite close in. She uses her bow. They go to fight. The, the the hill giant takes the tree and tries to swat 
the barbarian off the cliff, and she misses. But then she comes back with it. She has multi attack, and she hits him the second time and pins him against the, the cliff. So he's pinning at the cliff. He has to make a check to get out of that. He fights her, and then they you know they just keep pummeling her, pummeling her. Eventually, he deals the killing blow, and because he has a tripping glaive, he has a glaive and he can trip with it as a free attack. Well, as a bonus action if he if he attacks. So he attacks her. He killed her, but he just wants to. He's like, can I still trip her even though she's dead? Because I want to yank her off off this cliff where it's, it's easier to, to loot her basically. And I was like, well, you basically sliced her. You still have your attack. She's basically, she's literally falling dead. So I'm like, yeah, make your trip attack just to make, a, to make an athletics to see if you're strong enough to pull her as she's falling. Just kind of drag her leg over a little bit enough to make her fall. And he passed, so he, she tumbled down, and they looted her. And that was that combat. It was So I had a, fi, a CR5 crocodile and a CR5 hill giant fighting a third-level party. And you're thinking, well, that's that's, that's how you fight a third-level party with two CR5s. That's how. you just I just I used the terrain. I separated them. I was hoping that the giant would perceive them earlier. So they, they ended up killing the crocodile right in the same round that the giant appeared. So I, only, I didn't have... I was hoping to fight them on two fronts, but I also don't want to meet a game that. I wanted to make that be organic. So they just happened to kill that croc right as the giant appeared. So instead of having a two-faced combat, they just had a shifting... The giant shifted up to, up the cliff, rather than from this pool up to the cliff. Instead of having... I wanted to have it both, but I didn't need to have it to be both because I had, I had two different... You know, it, it still worked out great. So yeah, that was just a, another simple encounter in Roll Twenty with a giant and a crocodile, and just the, the map, the really cool map made by Go Adventure Maps. They have a lot of cool other maps. The Chapeku map from the four was I could have had an encounter on that foot. I just wanted to use it as flavor. They have a lot of cool maps too. I'll you know check them out. Now we'll call this Crocodile and Giant, and uh, that was just a, another dynamic encounter. I hope this helps inspire you guys to make some cool encounters in your own game. Uh, you know, we are Omniverse gamers. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. Uh, I hope to see you soon, and keep on gaming.